Welcome to the soap. So, hey guys, welcome to the soap. I'm joined by Arthur, as, and I am Daniel. Hey guys, so what's been happening this week? What has been happening this week? Been a big week of not a great deal of doing much at all. I've been doing some editing for our um, YouTube channel, playing more retro games. I know I harp on about that a bit, but uh, I do enjoy doing that. What else did we do? Got together and, and did some videos for the YouTube channel. They should be up soon, hopefully. Uh, I've been very boring. This week, I guess I've been uh, hunkered down, waiting for the No Man's Sky update, and um, waiting for that to download, so I can uh, I can do that and, and get some hate from Dan. But um, <laughs> that's jab 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 jab. That's what I've been up to this week. You haven't been well though either, so that's yeah, really well, that's true. Mentally, is that what you're trying to say? Jab jab jab. That's just yeah, normal. Yeah. Just get Marin's cat. Yeah, right. That's my cat. Thank you. Well, whatever. Some cat. Oh, cat. Everyone's fighting over the cat now. Just, <laughs> like, instantly, it's like, no one what's cares the about the podcast. Oh. We just want the cat. Everyone wants the cat. But you're going to have to explain what's going on now, because no one knows what we're talking about. <laughs> Earlier in the uh, conversation, we had somebody who will remain nameless, Arthur, uh, had a cat running around. You could hear it. And... <laughs> this is a gaming, it's a gaming podcast, not an animal podcast. <laughs> Arthur, what have you been up to? Uh, ooh, let's see. Well, I started, um, well, I played some Switch since I finally saw that. I got hyped enough to actually about that later. pre-ordered it. Oh, well, know. that is, I got my brother-in-law to trade in my Wii U, so that's incoming. Okay. That's a good drop, actually. It gets an extra 20% out of EB from that, which is a nice little sneaky tactic. So I'm getting the Switch for only yeah. 230 bucks instead of the 460 actually is worth it. Okay. Uh, played some Fear 2. I actually started oh, playing yeah. them. If you remember those games. On, back in on the a day. new console or on an old console? No, on my Steam list because it's sitting there staring at me unplayed. So I felt like I had to give it some time finally. Oh, okay. Put some minis together and also tried to minis play a board just... game but didn't quite work because as usual I make the mistake of not completely reading the rule book. I'm trying to explain it, especially a relatively complex game, and failing horribly, but that was fine. It was still entertaining. Uh, on that note, uh, we did actually have some feedback from one of the fans requesting some board game stuff. So I believe next week we're hoping to add a segment with Arthur on board games for our fans. Sounds like yeah. a plan. I yeah. probably will start just, just to let you all know. Uh, just a rundown of basics. Like, I'm not going to do a review as such. I'll probably just explain for anyone that doesn't Bounce play chat. or hasn't played anything of a, what do you call a modern board game. Yeah, I've got a few ideas in there, and I think uh, that's going to be a really good segment next week. Uh, I've been working. I actually had a fun little thing. Well, I don't, you wouldn't really call it fun. Today I had a fire call. I'm a firefighter, retained to the jail, and there was a possibility of some, how shall we say, bad things going to happen, um, uh, but it all got contained with some CS gas, so that was kind of a bit of excitement in the afternoon, um, which was kind of annoying because we got stuck in the jail lockdown system for a while, and then um, when everyone was gassed and choking half to death, we finally got let out. Um, so yeah, so that was a bit of, you know, get to go in the jail. I kind of wanted to jump in the, the riot line with a shield and sword and chop people, but they wouldn't let me. So, yes, um, that was a bit of excitement today. Relax, redneck man. <laughs> I'll take up the spear. Uh, bring me a severed head of a prisoner. Um, <laughs> so the guys were like, Birdie, birdie, you know, you got to calm down. I was like, come on, put me in the line. No. 
Yeah, I'm just questioning, are you actually a firefighter, or are you just there, like, <laughs> hunting prisoners down? Like, is this... I wish that was my fourth years? job, I tell you, I wish that was my fourth job. He just likes the uniform. <laughs> well, so there's another funny comment. One of the, We had an, another guy there with us, and um, prison guards were going, you better watch out for the little one, he might attract attention. They're like, oh yeah, what, like, the, from the prisoners? And they're like, no, from the guards. <laughs> And he was a little bit um, showing the fear on his face, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Only traumatized for life, it's fine. Yes, yes. You have to watch out for the guards. Yeah. But no, that was um, fairly interesting today. Um, but yeah, otherwise, gaming wise, I did a bit of, you know, played a bit more for honor, running through that. I also do the painting workshops for the miniatures, the Warhammer and whatnot. Um, got a nice little group going over at the Bathurst Game On shop. And I'll be, yeah, doing that and doing this and that and doing some sword fighting with the LARPing groups. And, yeah, not too much, but busy enough. Mm, busy Dan, what have you been up to? Uh, like Aaron, I've been doing a lot of the work for this podcast, um, looking into ways to improve the audio quality uh, in particular. I um, believe we fixed some of the issues with the audio, but are still trying to fix out some of the other ones. Uh, and still hoping to somehow get some better equipment and that with it. And we did our first unboxing video uh, last weekend, so that was quite a bit of fun, a lot of setup and um, that kind of stuff with it. Uh, apart from that, I'm in a Dota tournament for my workplace, which just shows you how big Dota is that uh, workplace is even uh, willing to have a tournament for it, the 16 teams for it starting up in April, so I'm just trying to get a bit of practice in, um, get a bit better and see how I go with that, just for a bit of fun. Uh, apart from that, a little bit more of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, still loving that, still thinking that everyone should be grabbing a copy of that, uh, young and old. Um, just seems like one of those games that can reach out to a, a large target audience with it. And yeah, that's pretty much me, just work, work. Has it been reviewed properly? Horizon Zero Dawn? Yeah. By us, or...? No, well, no, we kind of did a review. I mean, like, uh, like uh, someone that's actually... Yeah, was, every game, like, instantly has reviews. Reviews come out before the game even comes out. No, no, I know that, but I mean something outside of... Well, I guess I'll get into that rant later, but the outside of the standard, like, this is graphics, this is... Gameplay, this is 10 out of 10, etc. What else do you want critiqued? Uh, let's say the story. Or... But then you go into spoiler issues and that for most people. Fair enough. Like for me, I haven't finished the game. I'm at best 10 15% of the way through it. So if someone started critiquing the storyline, Within 30 seconds, they're probably going past where I'm at. Ah, okay. You know what I mean? Like, I find that's one of the hard things about something like that is that to really give a full critique of a game, you need to give away spoilers. And as soon as you give away spoilers, you're killing a large chunk of the audience. And something like that can't be done when a game first comes out. Yeah. Yeah. So, sorry to burst your bubble on that one. Um, but I'm sure oh. someone will. And, look, if you would like to get a copy yourself, which would probably involve a console as well, I'm more than happy hey to get, put in the hours time. and to challenge you to critique it for our audience. I will oh. judge. I'll try my best. <laughs> I am the law! Don't, don't hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll wait for you to get a console first before we even start down. Unless it comes out on the Switch, which I seriously doubt. <laughs> No, the Switch is going to be able to run 8-bit graphics at best, so... That's, I think that's the intention. It's, it's, <laughs> it's an indie gaming console, based on all the news I've been reading. With nothing on their shop. <laughs> so far, there's Zelda. Alright. Like um, I might just uh, rein this in. Who wants first topic? Let's lead with the big news, then. Alright, go lead us in. Alright, so uh, some more tech news this week. Obviously, if you've been keeping an eye on uh, PC hardware, you'd have to be living under a rock not to uh, see that 
AMD has launched their new line of processors, the Ryzen line of processors, which is pretty big news since they haven't really released uh, a new competent CPU for a couple of years now and they haven't been able to compete with Intel. We've now got, I think it's three separate chips that have been released, the um, 16, 1700 and 1800X chips. They're all uh, an 8-core 16-thread uh, processor with um, fairly small die, so meaning that the transistors that are on the chip are actually sort of, you know, really, really fine. They're 16 nanometer process, which in layman's terms makes it work faster and use less electricity at the same time. So they they launched one of the biggest selling points for these suckers is that they are about half the price of an equivalent Intel chip. We've got some some first sort of benchmarks and, and testing coming in now and while they are uh, very encouraging for multi-threaded work such as video encoding or, or rendering things like that where you can take advantage of all of the cores it's not such good news for gamers, unfortunately. They're tending to lag behind a comparable um, Intel i7 or i5 chip, which is a real disappointment. I was really hoping AMD was going to close the gap to Intel and give them a bit of a, a kick in the ass and, you know, maybe bring back some of that good old competition we used to have between the two companies. I mean, the new Ryzen 7 1800X, which is the flagship, um, it does go toe to toe with some of the the higher end core i7s. It's it's not an i7 killer, which you know I guess if you're putting together a mid range or, or budget gaming PC, you'd probably if you if you're trying to save a few dollars, you may go for one of the Ryzen chips. But if you were you know putting together a serious gaming PC, you're probably still not going to look at them, which is a shame. Correction, I'd say, is that 1600 isn't actually out yet. So the ones that are out is the 1700. Oh, okay. I thought the 1600 had dropped as well. No, no. So 1600 is going to be the 6-core, which is not out. And this, it's also going to be the 1500, which is going to be the 4-core. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. So keep in mind that the 8-cores are built not... like they're, They can be used for gaming, but technically they're workload pieces. Yeah, they games. are. So if you actually want 1080p gaming which is essentially what you'd call budget gaming, you'd want to look at the 1600 when that comes out and the 1500. What's happening is that they're, they're losing in the single core benchmarks because they're essentially eight core multi-threaded CPUs. Yeah. So I guess my question is, uh, and something that I don't normally understand so much, is what games are actually going to be CPU intensive? Because from experience, most games on a PC are GPU intensive. Um, MMOs is probably the big one. They tend to be quite CPU heavy. And I believe the Total War series as well would be another one. Is it yeah. where there's a lot of units being created? Is it is it that the issue? or? Yeah, where there's a lot of AI as well. Yeah. You've got to have a lot of sort of processing time devoted to thinking about what the, the other guys are going to do as well. And the more stuff that's moving around that has to think is going to, to eat into your processor cycles or, or, you know, slow things down. Most of the time the GPU is going to be the big decider, but you will eventually hit a wall at some point where the CPU will be, will have an effect. And that's the, that's the point. Like, and each game kind of works a bit differently, so it depends on how they benchmark. Keep in mind that, like, a lot of people will say something like a Cinebench benchmark is not really a very accurate representation of real-world gaming like right. they're they're built to gain a certain number out of a test and for a yep. long time the joke was that you know they were essentially built for intel to be good and amd to suck like that's <laughs> that so in basic known. terms for say so these things are going to be better for gaming they are going to have a lot better the, right? the current ones that are out now are better if you're so the way that AMD has marketed them is essentially people that do live streaming at the same time as gaming. When you need a lot of cores and a lot of multi-computational power, that's who they're marketed at. They're and that's not because there. some would be like towards the game side of it and others would be towards the streaming software side of it, is that yeah. correct? Yeah. So they're not really gaming CPUs. That's what I suspect the 1600 and the 1500s would 
uh, theoretically going to be built for. But it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, they're competitive and they're well priced. Ryzen 1700, so that's the lower version, it's 469 bucks. Ryzen 1700X is the is 569. That's the middle boy. And the big one, Ryzen 1800X, is 699. Okay. Obviously on PC case gear. All and right. What's the equivalent version of the Intel? Like, if someone was looking at the uh, competition or that, what we've got out at the moment, because this is the new stuff. What do we got out at the moment in comparison? So theoretically, the competition for the 1800X is the 6900K, uh, which let me have a look. That is currently 1,469 bucks. <laughs> On PC case gear. So it is half the price, literally. I was going to say, do we expect uh, the pricing of the Intel ones to drop as a result of this, or are we expecting a new batch of Intel uh, processors that are going to do what AMD are doing now? They're going to drop it, more than likely, but um, yeah, I don't know how much, and I don't know how well that will carry over in, in Australia. They've already dropped it in the US. They've dropped their CPU prices. Actually, it looks like the PC case gear, so the 700, 7000 series and the sort of lower end consumer grade ones uh, have dropped in price. They're all cheaper. The 16, uh, for example, i7 6700K is 485 bucks now, which I'm pretty sure is like a good 100 bucks cheaper than it was before. So, yeah. Example. Yeah, I mean, Intel, um, I guess. We'll probably look at these benchmarks and and these figures and and sit pretty and go well. We don't have you know a great deal of high end competition, but in saying that, they still have dropped the price. So obviously, there are going to be people out there that want to use AMD. At the end of the day, it is cheaper. I guess it's you could say it's the difference between using a petrol car or a diesel powered car to get you where you're going. They both do the same job, but they do it in different ways and for different costs. So it'll be interesting to see what they do uh, with the is it the six core and the quad cores. Yeah. Uh, I'm waiting for them. I'm very curious how they're going to work because they're, they're they're the ones really built for games, really taking advantage of eight cores. Yeah. Do you think the single core performance will be better on the on the yeah, four definitely. core, yeah, not even a doubt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I I've just got to tell you without without knowing anything about this stupid thing. I, can, <laughs> I will guarantee it'll be better. Well, I've just got here, uh, just uh, via the rumor mill, that Intel are looking at releasing their versions of their new chips in August at Gamescom 2017. Um, there's going to be a 10, 8, 6, and four core model power wattage of 112 watts or 140 somewhere between there. And it's going to be marketed as the Core i7 7000 series. Yep. So that's the latest everyone. in the rumor mill. Cheaper, and hopefully Intel gets off its ass and actually does something. Mm -hmm. And I'm really hoping AMD sells well because that's at the end of the day what's going to matter. Well, I mean that's the thing is no matter which side of you know the fanboy side you're on, you want both of them to be doing well enough that they make the one that you like, go cheaper and cheaper. So yeah. if one of them dominates too hard, they're going to keep their prices up at a high level, and then you know, you're know you just going to be paying a higher amount for one, and the other one's going to be too crappy to uh, even consider buying. What I'm if... saying is for the good of the market, buy AMD. <laughs> <laughs> Not officially endorsed. But, huh. Well, if... No, no, no. If the four cores are up to scratch, then, you know, my poor old... Uh... My poor old AMD is probably due for an upgrade. So. I'll be buying AMD the next time I upgrade. I'm pretty much decided. So just for the sake of supporting the poor bastards. <laughs> well, they're doing okay. Uh, don't forget they make um, the Radeon series graphics cards. So I don't think they're they're just uh, ready to hit the unemployment line just yet. No, 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 definitely not. But still, their architecture before this was what 2011. Yeah, bulldozer. It's been around forever. Yeah. Uh, they just kind of, they kind of made it more efficient and a little bit faster, and you know, put put a wing on the back and some mag wheels, but they didn't really do anything to the engine. So no, well, they couldn't again because of the manufacturing process. Yep. All right. Uh, I believe in other news, we had the Switch. A few people got uh, their hands on it. Yeah, I played it. I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> Good, that's, good segment. That's, that's a great segment. Yeah, we'll, great segment. we'll we'll lead out with that one. We'll, um... <laughs> Please do. So let's um, let's just. Oh, how about we do a bit of questions and answers here? So, 
Uh, Arthur, the Nintendo Switch is a mix of what? It's it's a mix of theoretically a portable device as well as a home console. Currently, it barely functions as both, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's got a few problems coming out, namely from people complaining that the stupid dock is quite flimsy and scratches the shit out of the screen because hey. when you slide it back in, um, the corners actually hit the screen of the dock, like little plastic tabs. They didn't. They don't have any kind of padding. So this is yeah, because there's a modular, technically a modular set where you have a screen. You've got your tabs, and then you've got your controllers, which you connect yeah, onto the Joy Cons. And so yeah, you can do your Joy Con games where you can turns into kind of like a Wii, like thing. Um, so yes, there is issues. Um, but have you played? What did you play on the game when you played it? Uh, so I've played Zelda, which is pretty the awesome. wild thing, back to the wild or whatever it's called. Yeah, Breath of the Wild. Breath of Breath the Wild. Of the wild. That's, it. That's it. So um, good that no one knows the name of it. <laughs> It's the well, new it's Zelda the game. New Zelda, yeah. It's yeah, it's just a Zelda game. This is the next Zelda game. Insert name here. Because they um, are planning on reduce. Uh, sorry, not reducing. Bringing out like um, Mario Kart, Lego Cities. You know, well, Mario Kart is essentially a port of the Wii U version. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, and the wheel as well. They're looking at bringing out a wheel too. A wheel too. Yeah. Oh, it's in a, a, uh, a wheel. The driving wheel. Oh, driving. right. Okay. Um, uh, even even Elder Scrolls. Uh, five Skyrim. Skyrim. They're planning yeah. on doing that too. Yeah, it was in the in the the teaser trailers. There's a bit of Skyrim Skyrim love thrown in there as well. It was like, oh, that's an interesting choice. Yeah. Um, supposedly, I wouldn't... it's the special edition, and supposedly it's going to have mod support. Which really? Have, and yeah. Well, it's let's <laughs> like. How Nintendo. Work, I have no idea. Nintendo yeah. aren't one for mods. Like usually, you know, if you put a sticker on the case of your Nintendo console, you get a cease and desist letter. They had such a closed infrastructure. I can't believe no, they're no, going to allow mods. Reports from like, it seems like what they're trying to do is they're trying to get more third-party love for the the Switch. So they've the reports are that a lot of indie gamers are bringing them in and they're giving them a bit of love. And supposedly the system itself, the guy that did the Shovel Knight, so he basically came out saying that it's very easy to. Um, program for so okay it's as he said it's actually the easiest of the three that he's done like out of the console so far of this gen so the thing so did I you play get... it on a did you sorry uh, did you play it on a, the big screen or the small screen both uh, so again the, the differences between the pixelations or the graphics and stuff like that how is that uh, it's essentially so the big screen you uh you got 1080p the small screen you're maxed out at i think it's 720 screen. Yeah, it's a smaller resolution. But saying that, because the size is smaller, you don't the transition's fairly okay. And in terms of the saturation and everything, like it looks quite pretty. It's yeah. crisp, yeah. as well. Like it's a good resolution for the screen. Um, text is readable, and there's no noticeable jaggies. Well, there wasn't on Zelda because I got my hands on a Switch for about an hour as well on the weekend, and of course played Zelda because there's not a great deal more content out there. Yeah, at the moment, um, apparently it's hard as balls. It's like Dark Souls level, in some cases. So would you say it's an improvement on the old Wii? Because some people have been saying that it's it's technically like you know the big brother. Like it's, the Wii or the uh, Wii U? Wii U, really? Wii U. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the the internals aren't very different. Like the the very similar system. Maybe some slide. I think there's slam slide adventures the Switch have has there yeah. can't talk but um yeah the internal are pretty very uh, well they're very similar like, to me the wii u is always kind of gimmicky you're essentially buying a controller with a screen like that was the whole thing yeah. so they've kind of tried to make part of that also part of the switch but in a nicer streamlined way i think it's it's a case of a wii and a nintendo ds of sort of you know having a legitimate love child yeah, it's it's kind of more portable than the Wii U. The Wii U was big and chunky, um, whereas the Switch is nice and thin. It's more tablet-like in your hand. I can see where they've got the whole carry it round thing. Um, it's like from, a sexy woman. Well, it is much more sexy than the Wii U. The Wii U was this horrible, overweight, bulbous thing um, with a really low-res screen on it, and it was like, eh. 
but the switch is it's kind of sexy it's it's thin battery well, life I like that it's, it's got the modular thing to it you know how you can t- you can take the consoles you can just it's like a it's like you're having a Kia pack in your bag you know in your pocket you can put <laughs> it all together play it and then disassemble it you know like like a like a sniper in the roof you know brings his briefcase I, I but he's playing don't games actually put it in your pocket for one thing it's not going to fit yeah <laughs> Because it's a plastic screen, it'll get scratched with your keys. Yeah, yeah. So oh, definitely yeah. Uh, invest in a screen protector if you're going to buy a Switch. Yeah. Yep, right. get a screen protector and also get a case. You're not going to carry that around in your bag when it rattles around yeah. all the other crap that's in there. Especially no, you, in you won't put it in your bag. You'd be too busy going to rooftop parties and, and having your friends play the Switch as well. So there'll be no time for it to go in the bag. I think what it, what it is to me as what it is for my brother-in-law as well is a bed console. Ah. Yeah. It's essentially an excuse that you can go to bed early, in quotation marks, <laughs> but in reality you're just sitting there playing Nintendo. Well, I've always wanted to forge iron daggers in my sleep, and I've done as many as those that I feel like I do them in my sleep sometimes playing Skyrim, so maybe I can. Yeah. Bed Skyrim. That's the whole selling point. Of Absolutely. <laughs> I am the that dragon you can have up to eight people, up to eight people playing the game simultaneously. Yeah, it's got all those like mod features, like you can yeah. combine them and have. So that's gonna be one hell of a bed party. Yeah. yeah. Lying on the bed, going woo. Especially when they get some actual games on. There. But Although, as I said, yeah, theoretically it'll happen. So. Hmm. So yeah, first impressions. I played about an hour of Zelda. I was. Yeah, I was fairly impressed. I mean, I, I went in with low expectations, having played the Wii U, thinking that the graphics wouldn't be that great, or it'd be laggy, or it'd be uh, simplistic like a lot of Wii games were, and, and was pretty pretty impressed with, um, you know, the graphic quality and, and the depth of Zelda. I only got an hour in, but it was pretty good. Like, there was a couple of moments where I went, ooh, that's pretty. And, of course, it's got the, you know, the good old Zelda mechanic, so it was it was fairly familiar. It was like a... Meeting an old friend, <laughs> as you do, you're like, ah, Zelda again. Excellent. Hello, Link. And they give you that moment where you're going, where does this one fit in in the Zelda timeline? Oh, well, I'll have to play for a while and find out. But I, uh, I don't know. The, the cell shaded graphics got me as well. That's just a personal thing, though. The black outlines on everything. Not really my cup of tea. It was very pretty, but a little bit cartoony for my tastes. But the gameplay was fine. It didn't lag. There wasn't a great deal of frame stutter or anything like that. So it's well, obviously got a bit of hardware in it. It's the Nintendo art style. They're not going to... I don't think you'd ever see them do photorealistic. Oh, no. I know, and I think it's a little bit more gimmicky. It's probably to, you know, deflect attention away from the fact that it's not a 1080p console. Or yeah. it, you know, and it's like, oh, this new art style, you know, it's it looks good in a lower resolution, and hopefully no one will notice that we're not pushing out as many frames as a PS4 or an Xbox One. So... It's, it's hard to say without playing anything else, but it's standard Zelda fare. I can see how you get lost in that game and, and play it to death like everything else. I did like the fact that he actually picks up very early on in the game, this is a very minor spoiler, a little piece of kit that helps him out with the map and does all the sort of inventory stuff for him in the game is is called a, what was it, a Scarring tablet or something? And it was basically just a Nintendo Switch made of stone that he carries on his belt, so I thought that was pretty cool. A tablet. Or a well, rock, this is rock kind of the next generation. This is this is like Nintendo's response to phone gaming, was it not? Where it was people were saying, "Well, you know, we're not. No one's buying consoles because they're constantly on the move. So let's make a a console that can be on the move." Was their niche that they want to have a niche? Yeah, correct. They don't have the much. graphical power, so they find it. the Wii was essentially the beginning of that. Yeah, I remember. I bought that on release day, mind you. I bought that at a midnight release. Well, a console. Yeah, Wii. That was Actual the only Wii U. I've ever... No, the Wii, not the Wii U. Okay. The original one. Do you think that they're they're going to blur the lines between their their portable and their their um sort of console market? Because they're traditionally, you know, the the DS, the 3DS is their their portable market, and never the twain shall meet. You know, all of us still waiting for a good Pokemon console game, apart from Pokemon Stadium on the N64. Do you think they're going to blur that line? Will we see a good so. good Pokemon game on the Switch? I'm sure you would. There's there's definitely Pokemon coming, but I don't think they're going to... Like, I don't think the Switch is meant to be a replacement for the 3DS or that whole line of consoles. It's it's a 
middle ground, but not, not a replacement. Because ultimately, if you want true portability, you're still going to go with the DS line, I would think. Especially you know, given that it has an actual game library at the moment. Yeah, well, that's, that's you know, give it, give this, give this time. Give the Switch time to get more games yeah. in there and get them to actually, you know, um, do updates or do do relaunch of new better systems. I think um, it's yeah, it's a work in progress. It's a little baby, and we've got to ideally have it grow. I guess you could say the game I am very excited about that is announced. So it's probably not coming at least until next year. Well, it's according to Wikipedia, it's the release is tentative next year. Uh, is the next No More Heroes game. I don't know if any of you guys have ever played any of the No More Heroes games. but nah, just tell us what it's like. Uh, well, they're kind of like... Um, so they're made by Suda51, who did Killer7 as well. And he's famous for being like a kind of weirdo. Um, and his games are quite weird. So in the, in the first No More Heroes, your character buys a working lightsaber from, the, from eBay and decides to become the world's greatest assassin. Like that's the plot of the Did game. Did you say no more heroes or has been heroes? No, no more heroes. Okay. Has been heroes is a different game. It's <laughs> okay. a very different that, style of game. I mean, you know, hey, like who who knew? Uh, this yeah. No more heroes. You kill a bunch of guys and and they they turn into coins when you murder them all. And you just pick them all up and you, it's essentially like a GTA clone almost, but not really. Yeah. Not fun. It's hilarious. It's bad lesson for the kids. <laughs> Well, you speaking of people, you'll get money. Speaking of GTA clones, what about Super Mario GTA clone? What's it called? The new Mario game? Odyssey. Super Mario Odyssey. Hmm. Are we excited for a new Mario game, especially one that looks like GTA? That it's almost kind of horrifying to imagine him stomping on real people like they're Goombas. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a wanted level and, and having, you know, the Cooper kids come and arrest him. Take all his coins off him and dump him out the front of the police station. Well, I'm imagining him actually just like a very hyper-realistic dark Mario where he like stomps a few people and then he gets cornered by the police and he's like not sure what to do. Like, I'm not in the Mushroom Kingdom anymore. Mm. He's got to fire like, flower his way out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the whole thing just... It's kind of hilarious. Right? Get down! Take those mushrooms out of your mouth! But it's my mushrooms! Boom! 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 Oh, look. <laughs> uh, Nintendo have always had a habit of being able to, to switch Mario up and make it relevant for the, new, for the new platforms they have. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to a new Mario game. Like everyone else on the planet. Yeah, yeah. Sonic. Like, bring back Sonic. There's a Sonic game too. Yeah. Whether it's going to be any good or not, who the hell knows. Yeah, it's in the, towards the end of the year. Yeah. Um, They'll start. The, hopefully, hopefully, they'll bring out like a Sonic Mania. I think for the moment, you're essentially buying it as a Zelda console. Yeah. And if you're into some of the indie games and some of the other stuff that's coming out, it's kind of unfortunate because, like Bomberman, I don't like. It's essentially priced at a full price game, which is a bit strange, considering it seems like it's a kind of thing that should be like half price sure. or like indie price. Not and and considering it only comes with two Joy Cons as well, you'll have to buy two more if you want party play. Well, I think the whole point is everyone gets their own console, even though it's not priced in a way that you could logically imagine everyone bringing a freaking. Yeah, I I was surprised. Switch. Like Nintendo, this is a very expensive Nintendo. I I was honestly surprised yeah. with the price point of this fella in Australia. At least we we're looking at what was it on launch day? Four eighty nine with what? no trading. Oh, for yeah, for eighty. Um, yeah, no trading. Which, yeah, surprised me a little bit because Nintendo's, you know, um, while subject to the Australia tax, they've always been fairly competitively priced. Well, the Wii was, I think, $300 on release here. Yeah. It was $299. So this is more expensive than that. I guess it has a bit more feature-wise. And because the Wii was... The Wii was the first time they went into a Wii direction, so I guess they couldn't really justify charging too much because it was essentially a gamble. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it is still cheaper than an Xbox One or a PS4, so do you think Nintendo are just like, well, we're still cheaper, but we'll tack a little bit more money on? Yeah, yeah, I suspect as much. Because technically it's kind of marketed as still a um, like premiere console, I guess. Mm. It's, not, it's not marketed like the Wii, which is like, lol, toys! You know? <laughs> They're trying to get the, the hipster crowd, so they can't make too cheap, otherwise it, it legitimately just looks like a toy. 
Uh, so yeah, in recent news, we had the WikiLeaks come out. Uh, it was in all the mainstream news, all that kind of stuff. Did everyone have a chance to see that? Nope. A little bit. Um, no, am, am I am I being recorded now? Am I allowed to say? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just, what was it? Vault that, Seven? Uh, did they yeah, call it? Yeah. Uh, so Vault 7, uh, they reckon that possibly some contractors of that released it, which I don't understand if you're a contractor and you're that much of a security risk, how you have access to... Must be loyal to, to America. Um, all of this. But in short, uh, WikiLeaks published <laughs> I tell you Vault exactly 7. Um, <laughs> the dance big says the Russian. <laughs> says the man yeah. that works with the government now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fucking terribly inefficient call. He is hilarious. Uh, Agio, this man is not with us. All right, so the Vault 7 pretty much was related to what the CIA could hack into or do in order to get information for you. So it was in terms of hacking into phones, uh, there was a bit about smart TVs, uh, your computer, your router, all that kind of stuff. Anything that's connected to the internet or networks or that kind of stuff, essentially the CIA has ways of hacking into it. Uh, importantly, uh, apps and that that are known for being encrypted so that no one can intercept the messages or that kind of stuff, they can still be hacked because the CIA is actually getting into the operating system of phones and that kind of stuff, which means it's not encrypted at that point. So they can just follow all your details and that before it gets encrypted and sent. So essentially the CIA uh, has been publicly outed as having access to essentially globally all the information of everyone. They did uh, release a statement um, in response to it. Uh, firstly, they weren't going to confirm or deny that any of it's actually real. So they're not saying it's not real, but they're not saying it is real either. Um, the main thing with that uh, statement that they released, actually I've got it right here. So they said, uh, we have no comment on the authenticity of purported intelligent documents released by WikiLeaks or on the status of any investigation into the source of the documents. However, there are several critical points we would like to make. CIA's mission is to aggressively collect foreign intelligence overseas to protect America from terrorists, hostile nation states and other adversaries. It's the CIA's job to be innovative, cutting edge and the first line of defense in protecting the country, so America, from enemies abroad. America deserves nothing less. It is, uh, it's also important to note that the CIA is legally prohibited from conducting electronic surveillance targeting individuals here at home, so in America, um, including our fellow Americans, uh, and CIA does not do so. CIA's activities are subject to rigorous oversight to ensure they, are, to ensure they comply fully with US law and the Constitution, uh, the American public should be deeply troubled by any WikiLeaks disclosure designed to damage the intelligence community's ability to protect America against terrorists and other adversaries. Such disclosures not only jeopardize U.S. personnel and operations, but also equip our adversaries with tools and information to do us harm. In short, for those who don't want to listen to such a long-winded uh, <laughs> statement, uh, essentially, might. it may or may not be real. Uh, it's only foreign people. They don't hate Americans. They just hate everyone else. And that you should hate WikiLeaks because they told everyone so. Yeah, because WikiLeaks are, are unpatriotic. Yeah. So essentially, Americans could never be a threat to America. Only foreign people. Uh, and that's not any specific nationality that would include <laughs> Australians. I was going to uh, say, unless you look Arabic, then you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on, we're well, all thinking it. Well, America's definitely thinking it. So. <laughs> Brown. You don't, you don't have to look. They can't distinguish between, like, an what Arab. If I, what if I'm heavily in the Philippines, I suspect. Don't wear a towel then, Mike. Um, look as bogan as possible and hope for the best. How will I dry after a shower? So, uh, particularly, yeah, it's Android phones, iPhones, routers, Windows and Linux computers, Mac computers, and... There was one about smart TVs, which was weird. Uh, Weeping Angel, I believe it was called, where they were using, uh, in particular, it noted the Samsung yep. um, TVs. And because being a smart TV, it's got things like um, microphones and that kind of thing in it. 
you well they would use that uh, to listen to everything for you. So they're pretty much using your phone, your TVs, your computers, and all that yeah. to turn on all the equipment so that they can then listen to it, whether it was turned on or not by you or that. You may have turned it off. It's like if you turn off your webcam or that, they can still access the webcam and watch you through the webcam even though you think it's off. Um, and that's essentially what the whole article is about, is that WikiLeaks leaked all the documents that showed everyone, if true, how the CIA does that. I mean, mind you, the CIA is saying they don't spy on their own citizens is essentially them saying that's the NSA's job. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bunch of pervs, aren't they? <laughs> Deny, so deny, deny. Been, no. They're, they're too busy spying on foreigners. They don't have time to, to also it's go over the mirror. CIA live cam for nine ninety five a month. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it the most dis- anyone. The most disturbing thing to come out of that was not only did they using your TVs and your computers and all that sort of stuff and um they actually were had an article about weaponizing vehicles. Um, some of the newer cars that have got lots of computer systems in it. They were looking at using them as um, untraceable assassination. Did anyone see that? That was scary. Yeah. Um, and so that's, t- that's taking over the um, equipment and that to be able to <laughs> disable the car so that you don't have control um, and that. So essentially, if you have a smart car that can drive itself, then they have a way of driving your car where they want your car to go. Um, and it it's the same better. with anything. Imagine, like, because, you know, there's all the smart TV, like smart TVs, but there's also, like, smart fridges and smart toast and smart freaking sandwich presses. Imagine all those appliances suddenly turning on at the push of a CAA button and all trying to attack you. That was a hilarious image. For oh, uh, oh, Dan, he, don't you have... He, doesn't Dan have, like, lights that go, you know, Alexa, don't kill me. I can kill you now. And then <laughs> the house turns into a transformer and you die, Dan. I've told Hello, you this. Marge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that is a, an important thing to note is that smart homes are becoming uh, quite a popular thing. So I do have uh, the LiFX, the LiFX uh, light bulbs, which use Wi Fi to connect to your home network uh, in order to be able to do, you know, turn them on or all that kind of stuff. I also have the Alexa, which is the Amazon um, version of a voice-activated control point for your home. So essentially, you can say anything you want to to Alexa, and if it responds to a command, Alexa, then she will... assassinate the president. Well, Alexa would have to be connected to something to be able to. <laughs> Alexa, but... put Arthur on a watch list. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, but... <laughs> execute order sixty-six. <laughs> Essentially, the CIA is taking over from Alexa. Instead of Alexa controlling your home and you controlling Alexa, the CIA will then control everything that you do. They can turn your lights on, off. They can turn. Uh, importantly, you know, if you have medical equipment or something like that, they would have the ability to turn that equipment on or off if it was connected to a smart home or that. And essentially, you know, this is why you, you don't connect your pacemaker to Wi-Fi. <laughs> Well, essentially, that's it. It's, it's any kind of technology that is health-related could essentially be used to do these assassinations. It's not just cars or anything yeah. like that. By the way, if anyone's interested in this in a non-sort of jokey way, I highly recommend... There's a book called Data and Goliath by Bruce Schneider, China, something like that. And he basically talks about exactly this. And he specifically talks about bringing in laws to make sure that you can also use all these devices as dumb devices where you can permanently disable all this stupid smart feature crap that connects it to the internet um, so if you want to use a fridge as just a box that makes your stuff cool without having to shove your Wi-Fi password into it you can do that but I do like to do my gaming on my fridge though so for me I guess that's not gonna work if mm. I can't but I, I mean my 360 like controller my... no, that's nation target <laughs> I, I guess it's important for the American government to know, you know, how many liters of milk you go through, or, or how many. Um, <laughs> I don't. You're I, worried about your cholesterol. It's fine. Well, well, hang on. No, he's he's bought in three tubs of hummus this week. He's a terrorist. <laughs> yeah, there we go again. I'm sorry. Everyone was thinking it. Uh, we've gone from slightly offensive to only as offensive as possible. <laughs> as offensive as possible. No, I, Only if you're thinking of No, it would it would be offensive if it wasn't true. 
<laughs> I think that's the problem. Um, but as long as you're American, you've got Aaron's nothing to worry a, about. Aaron's on a different watch list now. He's yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically we're all part of the Five Eyes network, so we're all being watched by everyone else. So. Ah. Look, if I, I guarantee you, they they have your thing is they have your metadata, but they at this point, like the the thing I'll mention is that all of the actual analytical work is still done by people in rooms. So at this point, there's not enough computational power to really do all that much with it. But eventually, they will, and that's the problem. So we need actually people that are aware of this, that are relatively tech savvy to create laws that would prevent them from doing this. But the problem is not nothing like that is happening. Everyone's happily carrying around a spy device in their pocket and it's all fine. If you, if you, if you know that whatever you put online is going to be used against you at some point, then it's, it's a moot point. Over the last few years, everyone knows that that's a thing now. And, and we're not really overly concerned about it as a, as a whole, as, as a consensus, I don't think. I um, think that's until there's an incident, and this is what always is the thing. Everything is fine until something happens, and then it becomes a mainstream news article. If your data, suddenly there was a case where someone had their phone hacked into by the CIA, and their data you know, was used and that kind of stuff, and it became a big media article, then people would complain about it. But at it's the not moment, going to be the CIA. Here's the thing: like, it's going. No, to but as an example. No, I understand. But your example, like, do you remember a little while ago there was this lawsuits with um, the media in the UK, where the Daily Mail was it the Daily Mail, one of those fucking shit dirtbag newspapers, caught hacking into celebrity, and they were using the same style of technology that the CIA would use. Because this is the whole point. Like, if you, if you have. If the things are encrypted, they're encrypted against everyone, which theoretically makes you less secure. But if everything's open, then anyone can use it, not just the fucking CIA. It'll be every dumbass that can get a fucking script off the internet suddenly have, has access to your supposedly encrypted WhatsApp account. And that's the point. Like, it's not just the CIA. You, you, as an individual person, you probably don't have much to worry about from the five eyes. What you do have to worry about is all the fuckwits that will on, on top of the fucking CA take advantage of it. That's the problem. So if everything's in the open, then it's in the open for everyone. So the less security is, it then becomes less secure for everyone involved and everyone that's trying to get your data. If it's all secure, then it's all secure for everyone. And that's the problem. The CIA doesn't want it to be secure, even though they acknowledge that at the end, they're essentially leaving the door open for every fuckwit to take your data and take your information. Yeah, it's trickle down, really, isn't it? That's that's where you're going with that, I think. Uh, CIA will start using it, and then it'll get out, and everyone will start using it, and before you know it, yeah, there'll be an incident. Well, their argument would be essentially that they they want it open for security reasons, so but the problem they don't understand, or maybe they do understand, they just don't care, is that once the data is out there, so once you have a way to unencrypt all this stuff, then anyone can do it. It's not, it's not something that's unique. There's nothing unique in the digital code that says, oh yeah, this, is only, will, this will only work if you're the CIA. It will work to, for anyone that has access to the code, which is everyone. If the CIA, the FBI, and all these fucking organizations get their way, and the entire Five Eyes network. That's the problem. But anyway, it's a completely different rant. So, one day, like I, anyone that is actually interested, go read that book. It's really good. Because that's, that's a much more serious topic than the joking around about it. But again, yeah. Go, okay. Go get well, yeah, alright. Well, if you're not American, um, then worry about it. But if you're American, you're fine. Or just from, worry the, about from the CIA. From the CIA, yeah, yeah. Not as as long as you, either. as long as you love freedom, you're okay. And walls. You <laughs> love freedom. I love freedom. And bald Perfect. eagles. All right. So with Mass Effect coming out uh, very, very soon, 23rd of March, I believe, actually. Bit of trivia for it. So. Oh, okay. Oh, Arthur's instantly out. Arthur's <laughs> yeah. Like, nah, I'm, I'm done. Minus five points. 
Yeah, Arthur sucks. All right, first question. When did the first game come out? 2007. No. Uh, 2005? Hmm. I got do you want to look in, Aaron? <laughs> oh, why am I locking stuff in? Uh, I'm going to go 2005? Hey, that's mm. the same as me. Arthur's right, 2007. Yeah! <laughs> really? 2007? 2007. 2007. <laughs> well, there you go. The second game. Pick a year. 2009. Um, 2009? What else? What Arthur said. 2009? Yeah. And Mike? I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go 2007. And... Uh, 9. 2009. Everyone's going 2009. Okay. No, let's go 2010. Fuck it. Yeah. 2010. Alright. Yeah, not in, Mike? Locked in, Eddie. Mike wins. 2010 no. it was, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'm fucking googling the next one. <laughs> no Google! No bubble! Arthur's already disqualified, and obviously the third and final game, the big ending. When did it come out? How long ago? 2012? Yeah, I'm gonna guess 2012. Mike? No, no, no it's 10. Uh, 2010, 2010, go 13. Mike, I'm 13. Ooh. Well, unfortunately, Mike, you're wrong this time, it was 2012. Yeah! Yeah! It's Usually been five years. years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's now been five years, uh, Andromeda comes out in Australia Thursday the 23rd of March, 2017. Alright, so... Is that the entire time. quiz? No. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm about to ask another question and you're like, oh, can I go now? <laughs> anyway, can you hear me having fun? Third, third question. No, you keep asking if it's over yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she Never said. Alright, no. right, next question. True or false? Has there been a ride for Mass Effect? True. As in like a roller coaster or that kind of thing. Um Who's it who's it owned by? Ubisoft. Is it Ubisoft? Yeah it is Ubisoft. Um probably a shit ride with extra DLC. Well, it's yeah, you, you, aware, so. You've got to buy the cart, otherwise you just <laughs> uh you just stand on the tracks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm gonna go with no. It's, it seems like a random question. So false. I got true. True. And Mike, you were. I'm. I'm thinking true because I reckon they wouldn't put that in there unless it was one. There is actually one. Um, <laughs> Mass Effect uh, New Earth uh, came out in 2016. It's a 4D holographic experience. California's Great America Amusement Park. Oh, I, I remember reading this in the news at the time. It's Mario. Next question: How many books are out? And it's single digits. Six. Five. Five, six, and... Four. Four. Correct answer is five. There is yeah. five Mass Effect books out. <laughs> I'm but fucking acing this shit. <laughs> fuck, you, fuck you guys. There's also <laughs> a bunch of comics out. How many comics are there? Is Heaps. it also single digits? Uh, no. No, it couldn't be, because if it's comics, it'll be a series. Uh, twelve. Uh, about a twelve? Oh. I'll go... 19. Ooh, 19. 32. 32, <laughs> Jesus. Okay, not that popular. It's uh, only just into the double digits. It's 10. Oh, okay. All right, we next... by default. <laughs> <laughs> next question, probably more of an Arthur one. Has there been a Mass Effect board game? Yes. Um, fuck. I don't think there has, no. If there, is, if there has been, it hasn't. It wasn't very popular because I've literally never heard about one. Yes or no, boy? Eh? No, I'm gonna say no. Got one yes, one no, Aaron. Um, no. There has actually been. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a of Risk, uh, Risk oh, Mass okay. Effect Galaxy at War edition, 2013. <laughs> And finally, we'll do this for the Xbox 360 versions because that was the most popular version. Mass Effect 1, what was the Metacritic Metacritic rating? Would have been about 93? 91. Mike? 95. 91 it was. Fucking oh. yes. Uh, <laughs> I think we'll I win going. the quiz. <laughs> Mass Effect 2? Uh, 98. No, it was lower, no, wasn't it? It was, it, was, uh, it was like 88 or something. Yeah, I'm going to go. Mass Effect 2 is actually the... Most, the highest rating one, I should say. Uh, oh, really? 
So, yeah, Mass Effect 2, like, for me, that's the one I hated the most, but worldwide, it's actually got better reviews than all the others. So, it's above 91. We've got a 92. What else have we got? 98. 98. 95. Ooh, close. 96 for the Xbox 360. And finally, the big ending. That'll be lower, surely. Uh, 85. 84. Just dropping quickly with Arthur. Mm. <laughs> 90. I'm going 90. with 90. I'm going yeah. with 90. Close. 93. Oh. Ooh, we share the points. Uh, share the points? Share the points. Yeah, share the points. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, lastly, in terms of films, because we had the books, the comics, the board games and that, has there ever been a Mass Effect film not fan-made? Not fan-made. I believe there's, uh, there was like an anime one made, wasn't there? Maybe I'm gonna go with yes. You got one I yes. Go, I'm gonna go with yes too. And think, Arthur? Um, I no, sure. I don't. Uh, no, I'm gonna say no. Isn't there one coming? That is correct, Arthur. Uh, there isn't one yet, but there is one coming. Uh, so we have had a few issues actually getting it out. It was also announced Mass Effect Paragon Lost. So look at the details for this. Yeah, there is anime. There is anime out as a series for it. That's no movies. Film. No, correct. Cool. Uh, but yes, there is anime out and a movie coming. That nice. Is fun facts for Mass Effect, showing how big the game series is. Four games, five books, ten comics, one board game, one anime series, one film coming. I'm pretty sure I win the quiz, even though I know probably the least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you hadn't even watched the five minute fucking video. <laughs> Suck it, bitches. Do you guys want some information about the series? Like, I have got some info on the first three games and all that kind of stuff if you would like it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll just jump in and do this. So, with Mass Effect coming out soon, Mass Effect is a science fiction action RPG series. So, emphasis on the action side of it, not just the role playing. Developed by Bioware, uh, originally released uh, for Xbox 360, PS3, and Windows. The third installment also made it to Wii U. They have opened up for the idea of remastering the original trilogy for the PS4 and the Xbox One. The original trilogy revolved around Commander Shepard, whose mission was to save a galaxy from a race of, I guess, mechanical creatures. They were known as the Reapers, and the big bad guy, obviously, being Saren uh, Arterius. Pretty much the Reapers were a race of... Well, I guess race is the word. They were a race of beings that exterminated all sentient uh, organic life in the galaxy um, as part of a cycle of constantly growing and removing and growing and removing. No one knows the exact reason for why they're actually doing that. It's just one of those things that happens every, you know, X amount of years. They come back, wipe out everything, and anything that survives eventually repopulates all the world. The Citadel is actually one of the artifacts uh, artifacts left from previous generations, which is where the game centers around. So it starts out with Shepard uh, investigating Saren, who, as he investigates him, he starts to realize that he's the, the problem with everything and that he's also under the guidance of one of the Reapers called Sovereign, who was left behind in the Milky Way tens of thousands of years beforehand. <laughs> Milky Way! Yes, not in your chocolate bar, Mike. <laughs> it should be. Space! A, Space! You a, Sorry. You want a giant killing robot in your chocolate bar? What if he kills with chocolate bars? Right. Isn't death, that like death um, by chocolate? Isn't that Boo from Dragon Ball Z turns you into chocolate and then eats you? Yeah, more or less. But yeah, so Sovereign's purpose is to trigger the imminent return of the Reaper fleet, which is hibernating far, far away at the start of the game. Once that's all happened and you have your big showdown with Saren and that, the second game takes place about two years later, which sees Shepard now battling a different race of people, the Collectors, which are an alien race who abduct uh, entire human colonies in a plan to help the, uh, the Reapers return to the Milky Way. It was one of those kind of things that I didn't fully understand as to why abducting everyone helped the Reapers destroy everything. One of those weird, weird kind of storyline mechanics. Yeah, it's like, 
you've got these it's like an offering i guess or something like that you know it's like we'll capture all these people and when the reaper gods turn up it's just like hey we caught these guys for you well if they know what you're doing with them reach those sacrifice I just found it one of those weird storyline mechanics. And if they'd caught um, Shepard, then there would have been no third game, right? Though. <laughs> well, yes, but <laughs> the, the, the whole thing about the collectors is they weren't targeting like any specific person. They were just going to colonies and abducting everyone. It just sounds like Reapers were playing like a really advanced form of Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta, Gotta catch them. Catch them all. And then genocide. The third game is the, uh, the end of the trilogy. The third game centers on the war being waged against the Reapers. In particular, they find out that the Citadel is essentially a big beacon and part of the Reapers' plan to exterminate all sentient life and that. So where they've been living, their home for all these years, is actually part of the problem. So the next installment takes place in the Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, It's a completely new cast of characters. It's set... Essentially, it's using the same world, but nothing to do with the first three. So if you play the new game, you don't need to know what happened in the first three. So it's a good starting point for anyone who hasn't played the old ones. Now, in this one, you can choose to either be Scott or Sarah Ryder, continuing on from the first trilogy's ability to choose a male or female um, lead character. It doesn't it doesn't impact the storyline for it, but it does give you a few different options in terms of romance based on your gender. They'll have a quick start uh, option for the... What? I said romance. We're okay. just imagining his lesbian romances. When he Damn is. straight, man. <laughs> awesome. Soft cop, hot. We'll get to that part a bit later. But there is a quick start option for the default appearances, but you can still go in and customize all the smaller details and that with it. With the default customization, it's going to work similar to how Dragon Age 2 had a family appearance. So you choose the default um, appearance for whatever preset you want, and then that's going to create your lineage in that. But they still allow you to make your character a little bit different. So if I wanted to have all my children have the Habsburg's chin, that's mm-hmm. that's perfectly acceptable. <laughs> if, if it's one of the presets. So oh, okay, the okay. presets are what's going to determine it. So, for example, if you choose black skin, you're going to have family that's going to be black skinned as well, as opposed to, you know, you are a black skinned person, but all your parents are white and no one can work it out. It's going to be plenty of customization with it. It's only going to be human once again, though, for it. But there are going to be other races that will you'll come across and will join your party throughout the entire thing. So the player can use two AI-controlled squad members in battle. They consist of members he or she has recruited from various places for various reasons, and they're taken onto your starship as you go around. There was a competition back in 2016, I believe it was, for fans to voice some of the characters in the game. So the competition, which was open to Australians as well, which was quite interesting. They said, uh, if you do a recording of this scripting, if you win, we'll fly you to the studio and you can record your voice and you have a chance of making it into the game. Obviously, if you were terrible during the actual recording or they couldn't find a use for you, they weren't going to use it. So it wasn't guaranteed, but it was still quite a big opportunity and most importantly, available to Australians as well. And where was my invitation? Uh, it was on their website. That's. Did you check their website as a true no. fan would? No. That's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. I demand a retrial. Breaking the trend of recent games, they won't be offering any official support for mods, uh, which they haven't offered any support in the past either. So I'm sure there still will be mods out there. It's just not going to be any official support for it. For multiplayer, I'm going to ship with a strike team system, which is fundamental to part of the multiplayer experience. Progression in the multiplayer isn't required to progress any of the story. And unlike previous games, so Mass Effect actually had a pretty strong multiplayer. You're not going to have to go into different menus or that for it. It's not going to be a seamless transition, but from the single player, you're going to be able to jump into the multiplayer and then back into your single player game, which will be able to create um and add on to the storyline so the third game had a system where how prepared you were for the final battle was impacted by the multiplayer 
This one is going to do some of that kind of stuff as well, but it's not going to impact. You don't have to do the multiplayer if you only want to play the single player for it. And most popularly, there was the comments that Mass Effect is softcore space porn, which actually came from Bioware themselves. So, Question, was that just a throwback to what happened back in 207? That no, that happened last year. No, I know, I know, but what I'm saying is, was, was he doing it as a reference to Mass Effect 1's, like, controversy regarding that? That's what I was saying. Um, like, he... No, he's not literally saying it's softcore porn. He's just saying, hey, remember that time when this dumb woman had an interview and claimed Mass Effect was softcore porn? None of the things mentioned any of the old stuff came out because there was this big issue of you're going to have sex with characters in the game and it became a big thing in the mainstream media and that. And there were a lot of articles saying don't buy this game because it has that in there. It's quite possible that he has in light of that happening in the past, made that comment, but yeah. his comments weren't linked in any way to any of those events. Right, okay. I hope it's like as awkward as Dragon Age, where you're like having sex in full fucking metal armor <laughs> while like while you got the bits of like the blood of your enemies <laughs> splattered all over you. Mmm, nothing like the stench of 10,000 corpses around us to make me so hot. Kind of like uh, Kratos in God of War then. Yeah, but Kratos makes sense to the character in Dragon <laughs> Age. Like, it's just essentially a dialogue tick box. It's like, ah, you fulfilled the little dialogue mini quest. Now we can have sex. <laughs> I believe a new version of our podcast will be coming out late nights with Arthur. Yeah, that, that's fine. <laughs> Arthur's take on raunchy scenes. Well, as, as long as it's not a David Cage game, it's probably fine. <laughs> I don't know uh-huh. if any of you know any David Cage games. Give us an example. Uh, Fahrenheit, oh, yeah. uh, Heavy Rain, uh-huh. uh, those games. You know, the guy that has no sense of human emotion or like how human beings actually interact with one another, so he just shoves awkward sex scenes in random places. Like Fahrenheit, I just murdered a man in cold blood and and I'm staring at my hands and I don't know, oh, okay, I guess it's sex time now. Well, if you're looking at your hands, of course it's sex time. Sexy fingers. Um, there was also an article for going back to Mass Effect. There was an article where fans already want to bang, to use less offensive words, they want to bang one of the new characters that they're introducing into the storyline. So there's a new race we still don't actually know that much about. It's called the Angara, and there is already a whole bunch of threads and pictures etc of fan material in relation to all of that 34 of course there is Mm. but yeah so there's already and that may be why he's referenced the softcore space porn quote with it uh, as a result of what fans are already doing for it flynn who is the one who made the softcore space porn quote was very quick to assure fans that they were tastefully done all the sex scenes and all that kind of stuff (laughs) And that they are part of a much bigger picture. They're not just thrown in there for the sake of it. Million dollars, but... This is not endorsed by Rooster Teeth in any way. Views, opinions, thoughts are all our own. Rooster Teeth and Million Dollars, but are trade names and registered trademarks of Rooster Teeth Productions, LLC. Copyrighted Rooster Teeth Productions, LLC. All right, so, Million Dollars, but whenever you watch a video, you forget how to talk. (laughs) Yes, I say yes. (laughs) <laughs> Mike's not even going to break it down. He's just like, yes, I want like that million long. dollars. For well, the, I guess the movie, for the movie, for the movie length, right? I'll put the well, length of the video. Yeah. Well, I, I guess, like, you're forgetting how to talk. So I guess, like, after the video ends, you're going to start remembering. So it probably isn't instantaneous coming back, but, you know, so, like, when the movie's on, you're there, and you're like, hey, man, watch this video. Oh, I'll look at this part. So essentially you're having a stroke every time you watch a video. Oh, probably. No. Just, kind of... you, just <laughs> shush. Everyone <laughs> shush. No talking. And listen to the movie. Well, I mean, you're still going to try and talk, but you just no. forget how to. So in your head, like you're talking right now, it's going to come out. But what everyone else hears is just someone who's had too many drinks. Someone that sounds like that trying to summon yeah. Cthulhu. I can, I can live with that. Mm. Like, I'd, I'd really like to pass that on to some other people and be like, hey, watch this video. 
<laughs> so then they're all like, nah, nah, and I'm like, hey, I'm making better conversation than you have done in the last 10 years. Excellent. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I guess some people would probably want me to do the same thing. But for a million bucks, I, I, I'm down. <laughs> for sure. Like, I yeah, don't want... it's not a bad million. No. I mean, it makes it kind of irritating. But at the same time, it does give you the incentive to shut the fuck up anytime you're watching a movie in the cinema. Yeah, but you can't tell other people to shut the fuck up once the movie yeah. starts, though. <laughs> <laughs> so get up, get up, throw your choc off at them instead. <laughs> Communicate with violence. Stop bringing your retarded cousin to the movies. You just bring placards with you. <laughs> yeah, can you also not write? That would be... Well, no, you forget how to no, talk. Don't so you... change it. Don't change it. Just accept it. Imagine, like, having to carry around a set of, like, prompts for people, like, right. hello, <laughs> shut Flash up. Cards. Yeah. You need Ring the bell. You a smartphone. I'm rich, but you can't understand me. Right. No, I think the way around it is you'd, you'd pre-record a bunch of segments or a bunch of bits that you'd expect that are needed or useful on your phone. So to get around that, any time you're watching a video, you just hit the button that says whatever. <laughs> I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> like a like soundboard. Stephen Hawking style? Yeah, like that would be typing fun Typing messages and... <laughs> yeah, but then you need to have a freaking thing and the thing and... <laughs> you got a million dollars though, like... Yeah, but I you imagine know what, like... What's the point of getting the million if you're spending the million to... Then go against the thing that... You know, cause it's not going to cost you a million, spend like a, a thousand bucks or whatever, get some cool tech and... Yeah, then you can sound like Stephen Hawking in the movie. Hire okay. some random guy to follow you around and interpret you. You could do interpretive dance or something, or, you know, every time you touch your shoulder means fuck off or just, something. Just watch movies on your own. Sign language. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll, t I'll say yes. Let, let's put it that way. Because it seems like an easy way to get around it. And it's not really... I mean, I do watch a lot of videos, so that's a lot of, you know, retarded not talking. But my, my only thing would be depending on how long it would take be before you can speak again. If you can speak again pretty much straight away, that's fine. If it's like a while, like if there's like an hour between every video, that would suck. I would assume because you forget how to talk, so you're going to have to start remembering, and nobody remembers instantly. So I wouldn't imagine that the video stops and you instantly start talking again. I would imagine that over the next 5, 10, 15 minutes of that, you slowly start to remember. It's like your leg going to sleep, you know. It doesn't instantly come back as soon as you, you know. Work would suck. How would I? How would I work? <laughs> You've got a million dollars. You don't need to work. <laughs> a million dollars doesn't get you that far. I know, like, but you buy a house and a car, and that's about it. Like, <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Can you imagine trying to explain that to your manager, like as you're watching a video, and they come up, "What are you doing?" <laughs> Just point to a sign saying. Dear person, I cannot speak for the time period. Please Considering go well. you, Dan, Aaron, and myself all work in a fucking call center, I feel like this is going to be really a bit of a problem. <laughs> now we know what Arthur does at work. <laughs> I'm still taking the money. Mike? Yeah, man, I'll take it. Oh, yeah. Mike was instantly on it. He hasn't changed his mind. There's nothing that can convince him not to take it. Hell no. Uh, I think it would piss me off to no end, but I still would take the million dollars for it. Yeah, I think thinking about it in more detail, I'd probably say no on this one. Oh, he's going to a no? Yeah, I'm going to go to a no. It's definitely going to irritate you as time goes on, because there's always going to be a video that you want to show someone, and then you're just not going to be able to talk to them about it. So it defeats the whole purpose of showing them, hey, watch this, man, and then, yeah. But I'd still take the million dollars. It's worth it. Guys, thanks for listening to The Soap. Hope you had fun watching and listening, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Signing out.